The commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Syrsky, admitted that the situation on the front line has worsened, that Russia is actively attacking along the entire front and has achieved tactical success in some areas. The colonel general wrote about this in a telegram. The situation at the front has worsened. The enemy, trying to seize the strategic initiative and break through the front line, created a significant advantage in forces and means, and concentrated his main efforts in several directions. Active attacks are carried out along the entire front line, and there are tactical successes in some directions, he stressed, the commander-in-chief added that individual positions change from hand to hand several times during the day, which leads to unambiguous understanding of the situation. At the same time, he noted that they have observed an increase in the number and regrouping of Russian soldiers in the direction of Kharkiv, our troops are reinforced with artillery and tank units in the most dangerous directions. Much of the fighting has been taking place around Chesivyar, a Kiev-controlled stronghold which Russia has been trying to reach after seizing Avdiivka and new defensive lines had been taken up further to the west in some areas, with Sersky conceding the loss of territory to the advancing Russians. IT should be recalled that earlier, the spokesman of the Pentagon, Patrick Ryder, announced that the United States has started supplying Kiev with the main weapons needed by Ukraine. ISW assessed Ukraine's possibilities to liberate its entire territory from Russia. Ukraine's ability to liberate its entire territory in the long term depends on numerous future decisions in the West, the Kremlin and Kyiv. Any discussions that view the prospects of Ukrainian victory or defeat as predetermined outcomes ignore how all involved parties could dynamically change the war course in Ukraine. The Institute for the Study of War, ISW, reported this. Western media continue to report that some U.S. officials began discussions on freezing the lines again as the new military aid package to Ukraine may be insufficient for Ukraine to regain all of its territory. The ISW noted that the current package supporters did not claim that it alone would allow Ukraine to liberate all the Russian-occupied territory and discussions of possible end states of the war are premature as President Joe Biden signed the bill for new aid just two days ago. The US military aid is currently on its way to Ukraine and it will take several weeks to reach units in the combat zone and significantly impact the battlefield. In the coming weeks, Ukrainian forces will initially have to use US aid to stabilize the front line and stop Russian advances, particularly on the Avdiivka and Chasivyar fronts. The scale and intensity of the projected Russian offensive operation in the summer of 2024 which is likely to begin in June, is also still being determined. In addition, the Russian military command may actively assess and revise plans for their summer offensive efforts to account for engagements with better equipped Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainians must defend against Russian summer offensive actions and prevent Russian troops from making significant progress during the summer months before they can challenge the initiative and conduct a counter-offensive later in 2024 or 2025. Ukrainian forces must also address the present issues with training new personnel, equipping the new units and restoring the old ones. The exact timeline of these efforts, which is likely to play a significant role in determining Ukraine's future counter-offensive operations, is still unclear. ISW assessed that sufficient and consistent Western support will be crucial for Ukraine's future counter-offensive actions. However, the US and the West will have to react as Ukrainian military command determines the scale and direction of such operations and communicates Ukraine's needs to Western partners in the weeks and months leading up to future counter-offensive operations. It takes only 10 ATA CMS missiles to cover entire front line in Ukraine. US ATA CMS missiles are not a panacea, but they will put a strain on Russian air defenses, the Telegraph says. The article says that unlike a conventional cruise missile, ATACMS can travel three times as fast as the sound of speed, making them more difficult for air defense systems to intercept. Their speed is the missile's main strength. Once it is launched, Russia's network of radar and missile detection systems will be triggered almost instantly. Once the missile is launched, it takes time to accurately determine its trajectory and where it falls. Basically, all you can do is warn everyone to get down, said Justin Crump, head of strategic intelligence company Sibyline. 
This would put a significant strain on Russian air defense units. The article said Ukraine's forces would only need 10 ATA CMS missiles to cover the entire front line and about 250 kilometers behind it. The US provided Ukraine with powerful long-range ballistic missiles for the first time earlier this month, and its military has already used them twice in the last week against Russian forces, according to three US officials. The first strike was inside Crimea's border on the morning of April the 17th, targeting a Russian military airfield, according to the officials. The Ukrainian military used the US-provided Army Tactical Missile System, known as ATACMS, for the second time on April the 23rd, targeting Russian forces east of the southeastern Ukrainian town of Berdyansk in Zaporizhia Oblast, officials said. The powerful missiles have a range of up to 300 kilometers and allow Ukraine to strike the Russian military throughout Crimea and in occupied parts of eastern Ukraine that had been difficult to reach. The US provided ATA CMS included both warheads with cluster munitions and with unitary blast fragmentation.